Hi, I'm Alyssa and I'm going to tell you guys all about biocompatible polymer. Polymer materials are solid, non-metallic compounds of high molecular weight. They're comprised of repeating small units. Each small unit is known as a mer unit. A single mer is called a monomer, while repeating mer units are known as polymers. For example, here is propene. This is an example of a single mer unit, otherwise known as a monomer. In order for this monomer to join with other propene molecules, the double bond needs to break. Here we have two propene molecules already joined together to form a polymer by addition polymerization. We can now join them together by forming a bond between these two propene molecules and the monomer we had before. We now have a longer polymer. Polymers can vary from length in length. They can be as long as a piece of string. These polymer materials have varying characteristics, for example, mass, flexibility and glass transition temperatures. They all depend upon the several parameters, the type types of polymers used for composition and the overall length of the polymer chain. This is a timeline of the development of polymers in the medical world. 1936 was the development of plastic contact lenses. Nineteen sixty to nineteen seventy, the first generation of materials for use inside the human body were first developed. In nineteen eighty, an advance in second generation was the development of biodegradable materials. And finally, in 2008, the third generation was developed that involves molecular tailoring of resorbable polymers for specific cellular responses. Before a biopolymer can be used in medical applications, it has to be put through extensive testing. Stage 1. Protein, cell, tissue or in vitro level. This screen for materials, the components and any leachable or degradation products for harmful effects. Stage 2 is the in vivo animal models. This evaluates the material, host tissue interactions and predicts how the device may perform in humans. And stage 3, the human clinical trials. Safety and effectiveness of device must be evaluated before widespread use. If the biopolymer then passes the three stages, it can then be used widely. The design of non-degradable synthetic polymers is ideal for implant materials intended to perform a function for extended periods of time. They provide the basis for an extensive number of medical devices as diverse as suture materials, orthopaedic implants, fracture fixation devices and dialysis tubing. They are also used as implantable carriers for long-term delivery drugs such as contraceptive hormones. Despite well-adjustable characteristics and being biologically non-reactive, 
Orthopedic implants made from non-degradable synthetic polymers and non-degradable bone cements ultimately fail at a high rate due to a lack of integration with surrounding tissue and infections. Biodegradable polymers offer many advantages over non-degradable synthetic polymers for medical applications. The ability to tailor mechanical properties and degradation kinetics to suit various applications makes biodegradable polymers a much more attractive alternative. There are many applications for biodegradable synthetic polymers including resorbable sutures, drug delivery systems and orthopaedic fixation devices such as pins, rods and screws. More currently, synthetic biodegradable polymers are being widely explored for use as scaffolding in tissue engineering. They provide a suitable surface for cell attachment and growth and degrade at a rate that allows the load to be transferred to the new tissue. So I hope you've enjoyed my presentation on biocompatible polymers and learnt a lot of new information. Goodbye.